This is Pat's Two Cents, reminding you that God's into love. Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online. And this is our Saturday service, and we are going to read from Romans chapter 12. Now, we're going to read verse 1 and 2, and then we're going to drop down to verse 14 through the end. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, the least you can do. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm. Now, as you see, we are to be, we are to give our lives as a sacrifice, which means we will have to go against our own nature, our own inclinations, our own tendencies in order to live this holy life. I know we get that, but here's the crux of the matter. Father, we ask you to anoint this word. We ask you to anoint this service in the name of Jesus and anoint whatever words follow in Jesus' name. Amen. Hmm. Verse 14. Bless them which persecute you. Ooh, ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Back that up. Uh-uh. Really? Really? It says that right in black and white. Verse 14. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Oh, you mean I can't cuss them out? I can't read them out? I can't tell them all? Put them in their place? Ah, ah. <laughs> Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. And when it talks about a be of the same mind toward one another, we know that's being on one accord, being mutually respectful, mutually loving and caring. Mind not high things. Don't get hung up on people with degrees and, and, and credentials and money and honey and all of that and and position and clout. No, but condescend to men of low estate. You know, keep your attitude humble. Don't look down on somebody because they don't have an education. Don't look down on somebody because they don't have money and the means. No, uh-uh. Don't look down on somebody because they just came up off the street. Oh, no, 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 no. No, we are all equal in God's sight. Don't forget that. All right. So, when you do that, okay, you're also not to be wise in your own conceits. Don't think more highly of yourself than you are. <laughs> yeah. Verse 17, recompense, here we go. Boy, it gets harder and harder, y'all. Recompense to no man evil for evil. They tell me all, I'm going to tell them all. They think they're going to put me in my place, I'm going to put them in their place. Huh. Don't read me out or I'm going to jam them up. When I get through with them, chew them up, spit them out. Be done with it. They ain't going to mess with me no more. Oh, huh. right. Well, the word says recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, and some people make it impossible. We know that. But if it be possible, as much as liars in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. I got to demonstrate giving place unto wrath. So y'all give me a minute while I get in position, because I want you to see what giving place unto wrath really means. Check this out. All right. You got somebody acting a fool. You got a bunch of mess going on right? This is what you do with wrath and all them little nasty attitudes. 
you get a place. You let it go on about their business. You don't get in the way with it. You don't conflict it. You don't confront it. You get out the way and let it move. As, Mar as Marlene says, keep it moving. That's right. Tell Wrath yeah. to keep it moving. Because you're not going to get caught up in it. That's what give place to wrath means. You get out of its way. And you don't get in its stream. You don't get in the river of wrath. You leave all that crap alone. Foolishness, nasty attitudes, all of that ugly uh, interaction. No, no. Zip the lip. Get out of the way. Let wrath have its way and move on down the road. Because a fool cannot argue if you're not engaging with them. You let a fool talk and they'll get tired of hearing themselves and they'll realize they're the only ones and they'll shut up. But if you add fuel to the fire and you go word for word, toe to toe, huh? Yeah, it can blow up in your face. See, the Bible has a lot of wisdom. You don't engage a fool. Let them show their behinds all by themselves. Let them... Let him be a fool all as a solo. Let him do a, a monologue. Don't give him a dialogue. Not a fool. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, set, and I will repay, saith the Lord. God says that. He'll handle your enemies. You hands off. Your lips should be off of them too. Therefore, if thine enemy, this is the hardest part right here. See how this challenges you. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger. <laughs> yeah, serve you right, sucker. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, go on. I, I hope your belly rubs up against itself and, and burns a hole in it. I hope you die. Why don't you just drop dead? Just go on and die. Give everybody a you do everybody a favor. Die. Mm -hmm. If your enemy hunger, what does the Bible say? Feed him. No! <laughs> if he thirst, give him drink. Oh, Lord, really? For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Wow. What a challenge, huh? <laughs> Isn't that what Jesus did? Do what Jesus would do. Isn't that what Jesus did? Mm, mm, mm. See, that's the part. That's the narrow part of walking with the Lord. Broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is God's way, isn't it? Oh, oh, this goes against my grain. No, I don't want to feed my, oh, imagine that. Imagine, now that doesn't mean lay down and be a doormat. No, he never said that. Mm -mm. But spite should not be part of your life. Revenge should disappear, dissipate, evaporate. In the atmosphere of forgiveness. Hmm. Hate should be swallowed up with love. That's the, that's the challenge. That is what God meant when he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living, not a dead, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Mm. Now see, if you're conformed to this world, you're going to cuss the suck out. If you conform to this world, you're going to get your foot and you're going to shove it. Mm -hmm. If you conform to this world, you're going to tell them, bend over, crack a smile. I got something for you. Mm -hmm. If you're conformed to this world, you're going to go tit for tat. You're going to do a little underhanded, little zingies. You're going to get them back. Oh, you payback as a dog, baby. Screw with me. I'll screw, I'll screw over you. Yeah. See, that's the way the world does things. <clears throat> but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
How do you transform? By the renewing of your mind. Input, output. You get this word in you that says love your enemy. Feed him if he's hungry. Give him drink if he's thirsty. That's your enemy. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, the only way you have the power to even know to do it, you got to read the word and get that in you to get your mind shifted. See, what God's doing with his word is he's screwing your head on right. Your head is screwed on backwards when you're in your flesh. But when God screws your head on right and you start become, you start lining up with his word and his way, then you start presenting your body as a sacrifice. You know why you're presenting your body as a living sacrifice? Listen, number one, you ain't going to want to do it God's way. Sometimes I don't care how saved you are and how much you love God, how much you know him, there are going to come times. You don't want to do it God's way. And some of y'all are honest. You tell them, Lord, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I, I don't want to forgive them. Mm -mm. Nope. Dance on the grave if you let me. But no, I don't want to forgive them. That's a good place to be. Because now you're being honest with God. You're being real. Don't play with him. He already knows you don't want to forgive him. That's why he's got it in his word. That's why you need to have your mind renewed. Because without the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost working in you in sync with the word, you will never be able to obey God's word. That's why he has to put a new nature in you. So you constantly ask for that new nature to ignite within you. To keep your flesh at bay. Because your flesh will get you in some serious mess. Trust me on that. That's why people end up incarcerated. Think about it. Some people end up dead. Because they won't back down off of something that doesn't count. Okay, let me tell you something. I was in a bar years ago and I was, I was shooting pool. One of my stories. I was shooting pool and um, I lost the game. So now I had to wait. I wrote my name on the board. I had to wait my turn to get back up there and shoot. In the meantime, this stranger with some friends of his come strolling into the back in the pool room. And the guy who was shooting pool was a very nice guy. Didn't bother anybody. Very quiet, very mild mannered. The kind you got to watch out for when they get angry. Hmm. So this guy, now this could have been resolved by just walking away. But the guy kept insisted on shooting out of his turn. Nobody knew him. He was a stranger. And he decided he was going to start some mess. Now, they're trying to explain to the guy that it wasn't his turn. A man, the, the guy that was already at the table getting ready to break the balls for the next person that was going to win or lose against him, went over to get the owner of the, of the bar. That was the policy. If there's a conflict, if there's an issue, get the owner, let him resolve it. So he did what he was told to do, and he went and got the owner. When he got the owner... And the owner came and tried to resolve the issue. The owner was a very nice guy. He's, he's saved now. But uh, but back then, you know, none of us were saved. And uh, and the guy was still trying to, to handle it peace, peacefully. But the man wouldn't back down. He wouldn't back down. And he got up in the guy's face and shoved him. The wrong thing to do. He should have given place to wrath, turned his butt around and walked out the bar. The guy he shoved should have backed up and just walked out. He walked out the front of the bar, just left it alone and said, no, I'm not going to mess with that fool. But he reached in his pants and he pulled out a gun and he shot the guy. The guy messed with the wrong one that day and he met his eternity right there on the spot. That's what happens when you don't give place to wrath. 
when you're a mother. Now, this was a very mild-mannered man. But all that emotion that was pent up in him, springing up, the root of bitterness springing up within you and thereby many be defiled. Somebody got killed as a result of roots coming up, springing up within you. He not only got defiled, he got dead. See, we have to constantly ask God to watch our reaction. We have to constantly watch what we do, how we do. We have to constantly be careful about our emotions getting out of control. Now, I don't know if the guy saw the other guy pull a gun or a knife. You know, if it was self-defense, I don't know what that was. It just happened so fast. But I tell you what, it did not have to happen. I'm letting that sink in. That's why I'm letting the silence. Think about some of the rampages you've allowed yourself to get into some of the emotional outbursts you've allowed yourself, you've indulged in, that could have turned south. It can get very dangerous. You cannot allow your flesh to rest, rule, and abide in your life. You can't allow it if you're walking with the Lord. Sometimes it's not about going to heaven or hell. It's about creating a hell on earth. Your flesh can create your hell for you. When you let wrath, when you let your flesh, when you let your attitudes, when you let your anger, when you let all your mouth get in the way. Oh my goodness. James chapter five, go with me to, I mean, James chapter three. Go with me to James chapter three, you guys. This is crazy. James chapter 3, and I read. This is why you have to zip the lip. You got to watch what comes out of your mouth. Listen, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man. Did you hear that? If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man. He didn't say indeed. He said in word. So what comes out of your mouth is important to God, whether you think it's important or not. The same as a perfect man, and able also to bridle or control the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body, which means the bit you pull to the right, they turn right. You pull to the left, you pull back, they stop. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, so big, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about. They're steered with a very small helm whithersoever the governor listed. That means wherever the person is driving it wants it to go, they can turn it to the right or the left. It'll go there, but it's controlled by a very small helm. Even so, the tongue is a little member. It's a small member of your body and boasteth great things. Behold how great a little matter, a little fire. Excuse me. Let me read that again. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. You can set a match and set a brush fire that goes on for weeks on end, destroying hundreds of acres of land, killing so many animals and, and wildlife by a little spark, by a little, yeah, just a little. Doesn't take much to do a lot of damage. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter, a little fire, kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. 
as our body members, that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on the fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea and t is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. A man can tame any beast, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith, bless we God. Mm. Mm. Even the Father. And therewith, curse we man, which is made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain set forth at the same place, sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? And so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and do with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, mm -mm, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where the envying, where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Now that ought to be a good eye opener to you as to how dangerous that little flapper in your, between your lips is. That sucker's a deadly weapon. And many people have done serious damage flapping it at someone else's expense. There are people who walk around with years of insecurities because of somebody's tongue. Watch how you use that bad boy. It'll come back to bite you. Give place to rat. Step away. Walk away. Do not prove your point. You ain't got to prove nothing to no sucker out there that's acting a fool. Keep your mouth shut. Don't worry about your little attitude. Don't worry about your reputation. Don't worry about your pride. Don't worry about how they see you. If they see you as losing the fight, go on. Lose the fight. Walk away. But you won the battle, baby. You won that baby. You won the war. You show more strength in walking away and using self-control than the fool did and blah, 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 flapping off at the jibs. Mm -hmm. My mother used to say, and, and I address it to even a fool. My mother used to say, Patty, it is better for people to think you're dumb, to think it, than for you to open your mouth and erase all doubt. See, a fool opens his mouth and erases all doubt as to what a fool he really is. Don't you buy into that little nonsense. You're a child of the Most High King. You were bought with a high price. Don't lower yourself to the level of a fool. Don't lower yourself to an argumentative griper that just wants to, to suck you into a fight just wants to suck you into a debate so they can get off on it. Watching them, watching their power over you as they jerk you around and yank your, your string and, and, oh, come on, don't be so easily manipulated. Shut your mouth and walk away. If it looks like they made fun of you, talked about you like a dog, and you ain't saying nothing to defend yourself, and you know what you can say to put them down, but you walk away instead. You may have, you may look silly in people's eyes, but God sees you as great at that moment. And you have gotten his pleasure because you have chosen not to try to prove yourself to anybody. What did Moses do in Genesis? What did Mo I mean, in Exodus, what did Moses do? 
when Nathan and Abiram came up against him. You know, you think too highly of yourself with me. Who do you think you are? Moses said, I'll tell you what, we'll see who I am. We'll let God settle this one. I'll meet you tomorrow in the afternoon, right before sunset. And we'll see what God says, who you are and who I am. How's that? God shows up on the scene, sends fire on their behind, burns up the priests that were backing them up too. They all died, sucked them out and, and, and burned their behinds, fried their behinds up. Moses didn't have to say a word to defend himself. He said, let God settle this, baby. I see you. I wouldn't want to be a later gator. And tomorrow, at that set time, God had the last word. Not Moses. God. So you stop trying to have the last word and let God fight your battles. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Oh, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God, not you. Let God, not you. Arise. I'm done. God bless you. This is Pat's Two Cents reminding you that God's into love.